So, every day, oh. As you may already know, Siemens has announced that the S7300 ET2000 components are being phased out, with discontinuation starting in October 2025, and after that, they'll only be available as spare parts. Honestly, if you're using these systems, it's, it's a good idea to start thinking about migrating to newer ones, like the S7 1500 and ET200 SPA, which offer more modern features and long-term support. And for PCS7 users, versions 8.2 and 9.0 are moving into legacy support soon. So upgrading to Wii version 10 is definitely the way to go for continued compatibility. We have simple solutions for you with smooth and quick upgrades to version 10. And here's the thing, ET2000 MIDO modules can be swapped for ET200's PSPA modules using our migration options, which means you can keep your existing field wiring and still improve your system. For a short demonstration of the solution or an evaluation of your system, please contact Nick Postelak at 314. Four five six five six 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 six, or send an email to support at industrialautomation.net. That's three one four five six five six 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 six. Say or send an email to support at industrialautomation.net. Next are some details I discussed with my co-pilot, so stay tuned until the end, as this info will be super helpful for making the right decisions. We're diving into some pretty big shifts happening over at Siemens. Yeah, they're phasing out some of their automation systems. Specifically the S7300 and ET200M. Which, you know, those systems have been around forever. Decades. Seriously. Workhorses in tons of industrial setups. Absolutely. But, you know, technology marches on. It never stands still, no. And if you're working with PCS7, this is a big deal, so listen up. Definitely. Big change is coming. So Siemens has officially started this phase out. What's the timeline looking like? Well, the announcement actually dropped back in October of 23. Oh, wow. Over a year ago already. Yeah, they call it uh, PM400. PM400. But the date to really watch out for is October 1st, 2025. Coming up quick. That's when they hit PM410. PM410, which means... Discontinuation. No more new S7300 or ET200M components after that. So spare parts only. Pretty much, yeah. Just repairs and spares. Okay, so less than a year for anyone still using these systems to figure out their next move. <laughs> so what's the recommended path? What does Siemens want people to do? Well, for factory automation, they're pointing people toward S7-1500. Okay. And ET-200 MP. Got it. But for process automation, which is, you know, where PCS-7 comes in. Yeah, PCS-7 lands. It's the S7-400. Okay. And the ET-200 SPHA. A lot of numbers and letters to keep track of. For sure. But for those of us who, you know, maybe don't speak fluent Siemens, what makes these new systems better? What's the advantage? Well, one of the big things is security. Security, that's a huge concern these days. Absolutely. These newer systems were designed with cybersecurity in mind from day one. Makes sense. Can't be running outdated systems with all the cyber threats out there. <laughs> what else? What else is good about them? Well, performance is another big plus. They can handle more complex tasks, process data faster. More efficient. Much more efficient. And they can communicate more easily with other systems, too. Streamlining things. Yeah, exactly. So it's not just about keeping up with the latest tech. It's about saving money, making your operations smoother. Makes sense. And of course, there's ongoing support from Siemens. You won't be left hanging. Right. Because with those older systems... You're eventually on your own. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So with the new stuff, you get the updates, the bug fixes, all that. Yep, all of it. That peace of mind is probably worth a lot. Definitely. Especially when you're running a critical process, you don't want any surprises. No, you really don't. Yeah. So that's the overall picture. But let's zoom in a little bit here. You know, for our listeners specifically, working with PCS7 and using that ET200M for their I.O. Right, right. Well, if you're on an older version of PCS7, like 8.2 or 9.0, you're about to enter what Siemens calls legacy support. Oh, that doesn't sound good. It's not ideal. Basically, you need a special contract just to keep getting technical help. So you can keep using the older versions. You can, yeah, but it's gonna cost you. And it's probably more trouble than it's worth. Probably, yeah. Siemens is really pushing people to upgrade to version 10. Okay, the latest and greatest. 
that's the one. It works seamlessly with the new hardware. You get all the bells and whistles. So speaking of hardware, those ET200M modules are going away too, right? Yep, they're being replaced by the ET200SPHA line. And I know that sounds like a big deal because ET200M has been the go-to for PCS7 for ages. It has, yeah. And replacing all those modules might seem like a huge headache. Especially if you have a big setup. Absolutely. Tons of modules. It could be a nightmare rewiring everything. Yeah, rewiring. That's a scary thought. But here's the good news. Okay, tell me there's good news. Siemens has come up with these hardware migration paths. They've actually thought this through. Okay, so what does that mean? What are these migration paths? Well, basically, imagine you have your ET200M rack, all those modules you're used to. Yeah. Instead of replacing everything, Siemens has these adapters. Adapters. You can slot your existing modules right into the new ET200 SPHA system. Wait a minute. You're saying you can just take the old modules and plug them into the new system? No, no, no. It's not quite plug and play, but it's pretty close. You'll still need to configure things on the new system. Okay. But you can avoid rewiring all your field I.O. Huge relief. Mm -hmm. That rewiring would be a nightmare. It'd be a nightmare, yeah. Expensive yeah. and time consuming. So these adapters are a real lifesaver. Big time. And remember, the ET200 SPHA modules have all those advantages we talked about, mm -hmm. the security, the performance. Right, right. It's not just about swapping modules. It's about upgrading your whole system, making it better. Exactly. More robust, more efficient. Picture proof. Exactly. Now, there's a key thing to remember about the hardware and software. Upgrading your hardware might mean you also need to upgrade your software, especially if you're running a PCS7 version older than 9.0. Okay, so that's when the ET200 SPHA support started. Exactly. So even if you can find some spare ET200M modules to keep things going for a bit... You might get stuck on the software side eventually. Exactly. And let's not forget about software updates in general. Oh, right. Those are important. They're crucial. Security patches, performance improvements. You don't want to be running outdated software and open yourself up to risks. No, absolutely not. Staying up to date is key. For sure. It's about security and efficiency. It's wow. not just about playing defense either. Yeah. You know, those software updates, they can actually give you access to new features and stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like new functionality you hadn't even thought of. Exactly. Streamline your processes, make you even more productive. OK, so we've talked a lot about the general situation, the phase out, all that. Right. Let's get into some more specific advice for our listeners. Yeah. You know, those folks dealing with the ET200M phase out in their PCS7 system. What are some practical steps they can take? Well, first things first, don't panic. Easier said than done sometimes. Oh, I know, I know. But Siemens has really tried to make this transition as smooth as possible. Okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, and we've talked about those hardware migration paths. Right, with the adapters. Exactly. Those are a real lifesaver for anyone who's facing a massive rewiring project. Yeah, can you walk us through that? Again, just remind people how those adapters actually work. Sure, so make sure this. You're standing in front of your ET200M rack, all those modules you've been using for years. So trusty old modules. Right. And you're thinking, oh, man, I got to replace all these. This is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, weeks of downtime, probably. But instead of ripping and replacing everything, you take those existing modules and with these adapters from Siemens, you just slide them right into a brand new ET200 SPHA system. Wait a minute. Seriously. <laughs> you could just plug the old modules into the new system. It's not quite that simple. You'll still need to configure the new system, make sure everything is communicating correctly. But the point is you can avoid a ton of rewiring. That's incredible. I mean, that saves so much time and money. Absolutely. And yeah. not just that. Think about the disruption to your operations, rewiring an entire industrial setup that could take weeks or even months. Yeah, you'd have to shut everything down. Exactly. But with these adapters, you can minimize that downtime, keep things running smoothly while you make the transition. So it's like a bridge between the old and the new. Exactly. A really clever bridge. And on top of that, you get all those benefits we talked about with the new hardware, the security, the performance. Right, right. It's like you're upgrading your system in place. Exactly. Making it more robust, more efficient, more future proof. OK, so adapters. Awesome check. Yeah. But we talked earlier about the connection between hardware and software. Can you remind our listeners why upgrading the hardware might mean they also need to think about a software upgrade? Absolutely. So remember how I mentioned that support for the ET200 SPHA modules started with PCS7 version 9.0? Yeah. Well, if you're running an older version, you'll need to upgrade your software to make sure everything is compatible. Got it. It makes sense. So you need the right software to unlock the full potential of the new hardware. Exactly. It's like trying to run the latest video game on an old computer. Mm -hmm. It might work, but you won't get the full experience. Right. The graphics will be all glitchy. 
Exactly. And even if you're not immediately facing a hardware phase out, those software upgrades are still really important. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Well, for one thing, they often include security patches, you know, to protect your system from those nasty cyber threats we talked about. Right. Those are always evolving. All the time, you got to stay ahead of the bad guys. And it's not just about security either. Those updates can also include performance enhancements that can make your system run more efficiently. This is like a tune-up for your automation system. Exactly. Keeps yeah. everything running smoothly, and it could even save you money in the long run. So it's not just about keeping up with the Joneses. It's about making your system better and safer. Exactly. And remember, every setup is different. There's no one-size-fits-all solution. Right. Siemens has a ton of documentation, tutorials, videos, all sorts of stuff to help you navigate the upgrade process. So you don't have to be a tech whiz to figure this out. Not at all. There's plenty of help available. And remember, you're not alone in this. Sis. Lots of companies are facing these same challenges. Right. Strength in numbers. Exactly. There are online forums and communities where you can connect with other users, share experiences, get advice. That's a great point sometimes. Just knowing you're not the only one going through this can be a huge relief. Absolutely. So we've talked about the hardware migration paths, the importance of software, upgrades, the resources available to help thought. What else should our listeners keep in mind as they start planning their migration? What are the big pitfalls to avoid? Well, the biggest one is procrastination. Oh, yeah. Classic mistake. It's tempting to put it off. You know, those phase out dates might seem far away. Out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. But the sooner you start planning, the better prepared you'll be when the time comes. I always think of it like packing for a trip. Yeah. You know, you don't want to wait till the last minute and then be scrambling around trying to find everything. Exactly. You want to be organized and ready to go. And another thing to consider is that this migration could be an opportunity to reevaluate your overall system architecture. You know, make sure everything aligns with the capabilities of those newer systems. So it's not just about swapping out old components. It's about thinking strategically about your entire automation setup. Precisely. And finally, always factor in some buffer time for unexpected challenges or delays. Oh, yeah. Things always come up. Migrations rarely go perfectly smoothly, so it's best to have some wiggle room in your schedule. Better to be safe than sorry. Exactly. So to recap, we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. If you're still running S7300 or ET200M components, the clock is ticking. Tick-tock. That deadline for ordering new parts is October 1st, 2025. Less than a year away. So start planning your migration strategy now. Don't wait till the last minute. Right. Get ahead of it. Remember, Siemens offers these newer systems, the S7-1500 ET, 200 MP, S7-400 ET-200 SPHA, all those. Alphabet soup. They provide enhanced functionality, security, and performance. And for those using PCS7. Upgrading to version 10 is highly recommended. Awesome. Ensures full support and compatibility, plus all the benefits that come with it. So we've talked about how to stay ahead of the curve. But how can our listeners actually do that? What are some specific things they can be working on right now to future-proof their systems? Yeah, great question. One area to really dive into is industrial communication protocols. We touched on this a bit earlier, right? Mm. Talking about Industry 4.0. Exactly. That seamless data exchange. You know, if you're still using those older protocols, yeah. the ones that weren't built for all this connectivity. You're going to hit some walls. Big time. Yeah. So do your research. Look into the newer protocols, things like OPC UA and MQTT. Okay, those are becoming the standard. You really are. It's all about interoperability and using data to make smarter decisions. Got it. Communication protocols. What else should people be thinking about? Cybersecurity. Absolutely essential. Always on that topic. And for good reason. You need strong security built into your systems from the ground up. Because the bad guys are always out there trying to find a way in. Oh, yeah. Constantly evolving their tactics. So think about a multi-layered approach to security. Like what kind of things? Firewalls, intrusion detection systems, strong passwords, you name it. Regular security audits, too. Make sure there are no holes in the system. Exactly. And don't underestimate the importance of training your people. Right. Human error can be a big factor. Absolutely. A well-informed workforce is your best defense. Cybersecurity check. Anything else? One more thing. Data analytics. Oh, yeah. All those new systems generate tons of data. Mountains of it. And if you're not using that data to your advantage... You're missing out. Big time. There are some really powerful tools and platforms out there that can help you make sense of all that data. Visualize it, analyze it, use it to make better decisions. So you can spot problems before they happen. 
Exactly. Or find ways to optimize your processes, save money, boost efficiency. Data is king. It really is. So we've got communication protocols, cybersecurity, and data analytics. Three key areas to focus on. Any final words of wisdom for our listeners? Embrace change. Don't be afraid of it. The only constant is change. Yeah, exactly. The world of automation is moving fast. And those who are willing to adapt to learn new things. They're the ones who will succeed. Absolutely. Stay curious, keep exploring, and never stop learning. Great advice. I think we've given our listeners a lot to think about today. We have. And we'll be back soon with another deep dive into the fascinating world of automation. Until then, keep those systems running.